Get started. Um, welcome. My name is John Chardlow, and I'm a land planner. I've worked uh, for the city of Oakdale for over 20 years. Uh, I've planned about 100 cities in the state of Minnesota and done a lot of private development work as well. And my role in this project is to assist the city in processing the amendment to the comprehensive plan and the rezoning. With me tonight from my company is Roger Humphrey, who's in the back of the room, and he'll be at one of the stations in the room. Roger is a civil engineer. And also in the other room here, we have folks uh, positioned out that are uh, to answer questions. It includes Bob Streeter, who's the community development director, Emily Shively, the city planner, uh, senior community development specialist, Linnea uh, Graf under Bartels, and Jen Hasselbrook, and Steve Egger, the community development intern, was, was out there welcoming him and came. I think it's always good when you come to an open house to get some information as opposed to having to try and figure out what's going on. And so what we want to do to start is just give you an orientation, give you some information, and then help you uh, understand how to participate in this process and how to follow it going forward. So what we're talking about is a special area. <coughs> and that's really nothing more than a sort of a detailed focus on a portion of the community. The city has a comprehensive plan. It has a land use plan. It has a zoning map. But when a change of this significance comes along, uh, it's typical for the city to take a closer look, have more community engagement, more opportunities for people to participate, uh, and take a closer look. So I'll explain what that is, how we're going to do it, who's involved and how, what the roles are going to play, give you some information about the property. We have started doing our due diligence, our analysis of the topography and the soils and the vegetation and uh, infrastructure and so forth. I'll share a bit of that with you. And then most importantly, explain to you how you can participate and provide input as the process goes forward. So you all know, obviously, by now that uh, 3M Foundation, that's the owner of this property, uh, has put the property on the market. It's basically, it's basically the property that is here north of Imation and east of uh, 694. I saw from the pins out there that most of you folks <coughs> understandably live in the neighborhood immediately to the north of the subject property. So again, the city doesn't own the property. The land has been privately owned for literally decades. Uh, it was previously part of the Imation campus, and the land is guided, that's the, what, the term that's used on land use plans, it's guided for multi-use business park, and it's zoned plan unit development for multi-use business park. <coughs> The uh, 3M Foundation put the property on the market, uh, and a developer uh, entered into a purchase agreement with them. Basically, the city has talked to the developer and asked the developer to not make application until the city completes this process. There are some representatives of Maplewood Development here tonight to observe the process. Uh, they will be more involved in this process that goes forward, but basically the city council wants their opportunity to hear from the community hear from the Planning Commission and, and go through this process to figure out what's possible there and decide what the city wants uh, before uh, working with the developer. So make no mistake about it, this is a major, major change in the comprehensive plan and it's really an opportunity that comes along pretty rarely for a city that's basically fully developed to have a property of this size to be able to master plan. So it's, a, it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, this is basically the study area. Obviously, some of it's already developed, but because of the, the nature of the uses that are there, we want to make sure that everything works together. That we look at how the streets work together, how the open space <coughs> works together, trails, how the businesses and how the homes and so forth work to, together and relate. So the, the study area is actually larger than the portion of this that we'll, we'll be uh, developing. So this sort of backs out and shows a little bit more in, in, uh, in context. You're all familiar with the area. You know the the target location here and the former animation building there and the property we're talking about is really to the north of that. Oh, wait, wait. You got the yeah. east part of that in the study area. Oh, wait, is that going to be de developed? Only in so much as we'll look at uh, whether there's a potential for trail connections in the future. It's obviously in Lake Omo. The city of Oakdale doesn't control that property. We'll just look at it from, from the standpoint of if there's trail corridors or drainage <coughs> corridors or other things like that, we're not talking about doing a land plan for that. So is the purchase <coughs> agreement interest in the, in the property in Lake Elmo as well? No, sir. Oh, no, sir. It's just the 256 acres that's north of the Animation campus. So the site history, uh, back in 1965 to 1996, there was originally 563 acres that were purchased. 
And those acres were master planned in 1975 and then again in 1996. I actually reviewed the environmental impact statement for the city back in 1996 when it was planned for the animation campus. The initial master plan that was approved uh, called for 9,500,000 square feet of buildings, and that's 7,500,000 square feet of buildings in <coughs> Oakdale and 2 million in Lake, in Lake Elmo. And at that time, the vision for the site would have included 18,000 employees, so another 3M basically on this site. That original master plan, it's a little bit hard to read, it's basically kind of a cartoon, but the buildings are shown in yellow, kind of in this elongated C shape, and then parking bays in the gray all the way around it. But that was the original 1975 site design that was approved by the city, did go through a full environmental impact statement, was in fully entitled and could have been built. Uh, in 1996, uh, uh, 3M abandoned their expansion plans. Uh, 3M sold the southern half, which was 280 acres of the site to Imation, <coughs> and they constructed the building that you're all familiar with that's out there right now. That property has recently been, well, not so recently, but in, in relatively recently been sold to the company that owns Slumberland, and they're in the process right now of making a significant reinvestment in that building. Uh, and, uh, there will be some announcements about that coming very shortly. The plan was modified to accommodate 1,800,000 square feet of multi-use business park north of the animation site. So uh, basically there has been no development on the site in 20 years. Um, uh, because of this, the developers need to find an alternate and they're suggesting that a feasible development concept might include residential, might include some mixed residential, and in the area around County Road 5 could include some additional commercial. What uh, does mixed, mixed use or mixed residential mean? That it isn't just going to be single family residential, that what they're going to come forward and propose will be some mixture of housing types and styles, but that's to be determined through the process. Um, and the new concept will only include that 208 acre cycle uh, parcel that we talked about. So again, what is a special study? What is, what is this process that we're working through right now? A special study focuses on a specific property in the city and identifies amendments to the comprehensive plan and zoning and creates the expectations that the city <coughs> is going to expect the developer to meet when they come forward with their applications. The city has done this in the past. We most recently assisted the city in a special area study with the Oakdale Mall was redeveloped uh, and for the high V site. Uh, that process, like this one, will include more opportunities for community engagement, more opportunity for the community to weighed in when the goals are being set, when the alternatives are being considered, and when the alternatives are being viewed down the, down the end. Ultimately, the thing that's important for everybody to remember is that the City Council is the land use authority for the City of Oakdale. Well, everything we're doing as consultants, as staff, as community, is advising the City Council and then ultimately make the decisions. So this is again that example of Tartan Crossing. Uh, it was the, the, last, uh, the last special area study that the city did. We worked with them on that process. Uh, and that's the one that resulted in the high V and the, and the residential that's there. So just some questions that, that, that we'll be asking through this process. Uh, what opportunities are available to the community due to the large size of this property? What land uses would best fit the city's needs? Uh, how will parks and open space and trails and sidewalks and other amenities be addressed through this process? Uh, how can the design of this neighborhood support healthy living, walking, walkable neighborhoods? Uh, how will the road and utility systems be developed? And how will the development be compatible with adjacent uses and integrate uh, into the rest of the community? So I want to share a little bit with you about the process, kind of explain where we are in that, in that process. Uh, and this is a diagram that's in the first station in the other room, and I'm happy to talk to you about it and answer questions there after we've done this presentation. But basically, we started out in August. And there was a meeting, a joint meeting between the Planning Commission and the City Council that we attended. And we presented this process to them. And basically the council at that time approved the process and started to articulate some expectations for us. They, we had another meeting where they did more of that. But they told us what they expected of the process. And they also started to talk about what some of the desired outcomes would be if this process is, is successful. Excuse me. So these little boxes just show the the, the Yellow boxes are meetings with staff and then meetings with the developer and meetings with the city council staff developer, uh, joint meetings of these, these triangles. So at the meeting that we just held uh, on the 24th last week, 
we came forward to the to the city council and planning commission and presented them a more detailed uh, analysis and summary of all the property history uh, we gave them a more detailed review of the site's development potential and, and natural characteristics <coughs> its topography its soils its wetlands its vegetation we talked about the infrastructure where the sanitary sewer is where the water is how the drainage works and so forth uh, we also presented the beginning uh, draft of a market research study that's being done. It isn't complete yet, but uh, Roger Humphrey will be at a table in here and he can share the preliminary findings of the, the market research study. We started pulling together the kind of information that will be included in environmental assessment worksheet. So that is a process that will be part of this near the end. Uh, we gave them information about parks and open space and how this property fits in the context of the broader regional park system and county park system and city park system. Uh, started to talk about housing needs and opportunities. And we also presented uh, you know, what we call a broader regulatory framework, all of the other permits that would be required from the Department of Natural Resources and from the county and MnDOT and so forth, Metropolitan Council. So we presented that all to the Appointing Commission and City Council and they gave us uh, some direction to go forward. Uh, we are here tonight uh, this is the, the first opportunity for community engagement. We've invited the neighborhood, invited the broader community. Uh, we also will have <coughs> with, uh, Washington County with the Watershed District and with all the boards and commissions that are appointed within the city, <coughs> everybody will have a chance to review and have input into this process. With the information that we got from the City Council and Planning Commission a couple nights ago, and with the input that you give us tonight, we'll prepare a draft vision statement for the site and we'll also prepare a set of goals and policies. And that will then be reviewed and brought to the Planning Commission City Council on March 14th. They will review it, they'll look at all the input they get from the community and all of the input they get from all our other advisory commissions and they'll make revisions to that. We'll then take uh, that information and we'll start the process of developing what we're calling schematic concept alternatives. What I mean by that is we won't be doing detailed design but we will be identifying roadway corridors, we will be identifying open space corridors, we'll be identifying places where wetlands could be restored and enhanced, we'll be looking at places where parks and open space could be, we'll look at alternative patterns for parks and open space, and we'll look at different development areas on the site to see how they could work together. So we'll do two or three of those, and we'll use those expectations that the council gave us and the goals and policies as the evaluation criteria to rank those alternatives. When that's been done, there'll be another opportunity for community engagement. Now certainly, everything that's done as part of this process will be posted on the website. You can ask questions at any time through this process. You can submit comments at any time. Emily, Sh Emily Shively is the city planner. You're gonna have her email address. You can get in touch with her through the website. If you have questions at any time through this process, any comment you wanna make, any question you have at any time through the process, by all means, give it. To her. We'll then have an opportunity for community engagement and following that the Council and Planning Commission will review and select the preferred alternative. Again, our company isn't going to be the one who actually does the design of the project, uh, but we are skilled land planners. The people who from our team who will be working on this are the same people who master plan Stone Mill Farms in Woodbury and Dancing Waters in Woodbury. <coughs> Uh, Liberty on the Lake in Stillwater, uh, Arbor Lakes in Maple Grove, and a number of conservation developments around the Twin Cities, including Wild Meadow. So we are experienced land planners, all different types and styles, of <coughs> and we'll bring that, uh, that knowledge and expertise to the process uh, as part of this uh, as part of this working planning process. Once that work is done and the council has selected a preferred alternative after community engagement, uh, we'll start working on the, the land use amendment for the comprehensive plan and that will be how this plan should be reflected on the city's adopted land use plan and it'll identify the land uses it'll identify the parks and open space it'll identify the roadway corridors and show how the property will be served with infrastructure there will be public hearings as part of that process uh, and this is the point at which the developer and the developers team will really start playing more of a role and this will be the point at which they take this information they listen to what the city said, they understand the city's expectations, they'll come forward with their plans. And they'll make applications to subdivide the property, they'll make application for a planned unit development, which is type of zoning, 
It's a type of zoning that gives the city the opportunity to negotiate for more control over the property than they would through normal zoning. Uh, and it will have design standards and a development agreement. And that's the point in the process at which the final uh, environmental review will be done as well. So at this point, the expectation is that the council will be in a point of, of I keep thinking I'm hitting the pointer, uh, will be in a position to probably make that final decision on the comprehensive plan around August of 2017. So that's the basic schedule that we're working with. So again, just to review roles and responsibilities, the city council is the land use authority. Uh, they're the ones who have authorized this process. They're the ones who've set expectations. And they're the ones who will make key decisions at every one of these threshold points along the way. Uh, the planning commission is a group of citizens just like yourself who have been appointed by the council to advise them on planning matters. Uh, they have been participating in these joint meetings with the city council. They'll support the city council at every step along the way. They'll also provide feedback throughout the process, and they'll assist the council in making its decision. And you, the community and neighbors, uh, provide feedback throughout the process on issues, goals, and policies, and your thoughts and opinions about uh, all of the alternatives that get generated. So again, the city council will make the final decisions, but they have given us some direction already in terms of what their expectations are, what their charge is to us about how to conduct this process. They've told us that they want the process to be open and transparent, and they want clear communication throughout. Uh, they want respect for input from neighboring property owners, but they also recognize that this is a property of citywide importance, and so they want to look at it from that perspective as well. They want a clear understanding about what the market conditions are, what opportunities are available in the marketplace for the site. They also expect that once the city has come up with its expectations and done this process, that the developer will follow it. So part of the message to the developer is, we're going through this process, we're going to work with you through that process, but when we get to the conclusion, we expect that the plans that come forward will be consistent with those expectations. And I think just in general terms, recognizing that we should take full advantage of this opportunity. They also expect that the property will develop in accordance with a master plan that incorporates open spaces, trails, amenities, and community parks, and potentially community gathering places that there should be an opportunity for move up housing, but also consider opportunities for other housing choices within a master plan with design elements that pulls it all together into a, a cohesive neighborhood with a strong image and character. They don't want cookie cutter. Uh, the, we, I've heard several times we don't want to be just like Woodbury. I don't, I don't tend to think of Woodbury as cookie cutter, but, <laughs> but, but that's been said many, many times. They don't want this just to be a standard subdivision. They want it to be well-designed with uh, open space and so forth, and also very strong focus on environmental stewardship, sustainability, and healthy living. So again, the project timeline, the project will take approximately 12 months, should be completed in August of 2017. And that final product is going to be what we call a development framework uh, that will be adopted and incorporated into the comprehensive plan. And subsequent to that, the, the developer will come forward with their plan <coughs> and seek the city's approval. Again, just in general terms, it's important to remember that this land right here is currently guided and zoned and fully entitled, means somebody could build 1.8 million square feet of mixed-use business. And so what's being proposed is that mixed-use business being slid down to the area around the Imation campus. Again, they're in the process right now of, of making a significant reinvestment in that building. They have plans to come forward with other buildings and other investment. But notably, if I'm a property owner living up here, I know that what's going to be next to me when this is all said and done is going to be some form of residential development and not uh, 1.8 million square feet of a uh, business park. There will be Undoubtedly, at some point in the future, some additional retail destination here. There's been some discussion about potential hotel uh, sites somewhere on this side. Uh, there's been discussion about a distribution facility. All that's yet to be determined. So we expect that there will be a diversity of housing options within this development. We expect that because we have the chance to plan this as a large site, that we can be efficient and cost effective in terms of how we design the infrastructure. Uh, we can definitely do this in a way that's sustainable and supports healthy living. And we can do it based on solid information to make sure that the choices that are brought forward are grounded in market reality. Just a little bit of information about the site. You see it here in the 
context of surrounding cities. Again, everybody recognizes that Lake Elmo is right up against. Uh, Highway 694 is here. Uh, so the site sits right there in, in, in eastern, northeastern uh, Oakdale. Uh, the site, this is the existing uses on the site. The pink shows office for the animation building. This green is agriculture, and the lighter green is undeveloped. So that's just a description of how the property is currently being used. This is how it's guided on the comprehensive plan. Again, that the entire parcel all the way up to the edge with the neighboring residential is guided and zoned for mixed business at this point. So that's the change that's being contemplated. This is a picture, an aerial photo that shows the various, the various parcels with the 3M property. Uh, here, this is 40th Street, the animation building down here, now owned by Larson Realty, which is one of the parent companies of Slumberland. This is a, a depiction of kind of the lay of the land with the higher ground. It's here with the <coughs> higher point right here, sloping down to the lowest point down here. It's a gently rolling piece of property, really uh, a site that has beautiful development potential. Uh, and this is showing it in the context of the adjacent roadway system. Not surprisingly, not a lot of traffic on some of the roads uh, to the east, given the fact that it's undeveloped property. Uh, most of the traffic being on 5 and on 694. So a very important issue, and one I know, I certainly know from experience is important to you, is how is this going to work from a street system standpoint, and what are going to be the traffic impacts associated with each of these alternatives, and you have my assurance that we will be sharing that information with you as we look at those alternatives. I will tell you also that I'm very certain that the vast majority of the trips that are generated from this site are going to be heading down uh, this way. There, there's probably very few reasons why people, for the most part, would go to the north, but I'm certainly not going to say that none would. And so this is the broader transportation network, but equally important is kind of how it fits into the, the trailway system. How does it fit into regional trails? What is its proximity and relationship with other significant parks and open space in the area, both city parks and county parks and regional parks? So we'll be looking not only at the the trail plans that are already adopted, but how those could be changed in the future uh, to make better connections. And this is hard for you to see. You can see it in the other room, but it basically shows where the various infrastructure is, where the sanitary sewer is that will be extended to serve the site, where the water is, and so forth. Suffice it to say, the city has infrastructure with enough capacity to support the full development of the site, because as you would expect, it was put in to support 1.8 million square feet of commercial development. So we don't expect issues with capacity with respect to serving the site with utilities. I'm going to give you just a couple of snapshots of what the preliminary market study has said. <coughs> Again, my colleague Roger Humphrey can talk about this in more detail. Um, it is preliminary. The bottom line is that uh, you know we went through a big recession, but things have gotten better, gotten steadily better, kind of slowly better. Uh, the the, the number of total listings in the region is down, and there's been an upward sale, uh, trend in sales across the region. And in fact, the situation in what's called the competitive market area around the subject property is actually pretty, pretty substantially better than the overall metropolitan area. Uh, everybody who works in housing knows that there's a gap between existing, pre-existing housing and the cost of new housing, but that has been getting better. Um, this, is a, this is a lot of information, but what it, it basically says is that the peak uh, back in the fourth quarter of, of uh, 2005, we were, we were uh, building about 10,500 housing units in the Twin Cities metropolitan area, and the, that's really back now to about half of that rate, about half of what it was uh, at the peak, so about 5,000. But interestingly, uh, this is a comparison between the overall metropolitan area and the competitive market area surrounding this 3M property. And actually the current housing starts have come back to about 80% of the peak within the area around this area. So the market conditions are actually stronger around this site than Excuse in the general me. metropolitan How area. How can you say that because there's no property available on Oakdale? It's all been built on. How can you say that it's competing? How can you say that statement? There's no land available in Oakdale, so how can it be 80% of the peak in 2005? This is taken from current housing starts. 
So it's actually the number of housing units that were started within the competitive market area, which includes northern Woodbury and portions of Stillwater, as well as portions of Maplewood. So it's actually building permits that have been pulled. And this is just in, in indicating the amount of months of supply of development within this competing market area. And it's, a, it's generally considered in the, in the industry that a 24 month uh, supply indicates that there's demand for new development. And as of right now, there's about a 10 month supply. So all of the general market information points to the fact that uh, it's a generally good environment right now for market of housing. Regional apartment vacancy rates remain pretty low. Uh, office space has actually had a negative absorption. We don't anticipate a lot of market for office other than that which is associated with the animation complex. And we really don't see significant regional scale retail opportunities either. either. The, the, we, we see the, the market that's there in Woodbury and Maplewood is satisfying most of that. So the room that's over here, uh, the opportunities to learn more and get into more detail. Uh, there's the first one which we'll be talking about the planning process if you have more questions about that. If you have questions about roads, trails, transit, and infrastructure, there will be a station for that. Parks, natural resources, and amenities, uh, land development <coughs> opportunities, and then basically a discussion about what you feel makes a great neighborhood. Again, you can also submit, we encourage you to submit comment cards. We encourage you to submit comments on the website uh, and to submit them directly to Emily Shively as well. How many actual homes are you talking? What's the density of this residential? It'll be park? completely to be determined at this point. Nothing's no, been drawn. There's no, no ballpark plan. figure no. at all. No. Um, you mentioned five different developments that have been in a lot. They do carpet. Not one of them that you mentioned had high density houses, stacked up, multis. There's none of that in Liberty. It's up against mixed use in Liberty. It's a nice example. Um, they pack them in there, I could jump rooftop to rooftop, but they're single family. So you can't give us a density rating, like we're gonna have a bunch of twin homes, quads, eight plexes, like things that might be around Eagle Valley Golf Course. Nothing has been planned. Yeah. Nothing, there isn't, the a, there isn't a development program, there hasn't, been, there hasn't been pen put to paper, nothing has been planned. You have a chance to give exactly that comment to the city before anything was drawn. Okay. And I only showed you those neighborhoods as examples of projects that my team has been involved with, mm -hmm. not as a neighborhood that I would suggest is. No, they're nice neighborhoods and they don't have high density. That's why I was kind of interested in that. I have two questions. One, what is move up housing? And two, on your market study for um, feasibility for uh, new housing starts, what price range is that? Because we all know new housing starts uh, a, cap a feasibility di differs from one range to another. It was the city council that said that used the term "move up." So well, my expectation. What that means? My expectation of what that meant would be an opportunity for someone who owns a house in Oakdale to buy a house that's a little nicer or more expensive. Oh, so not like you would start with starters there within that area that you could move up from. <laughs> yeah, the council said that their expectation is that some of the housing would be move up, but we really don't have a development program. Okay. You're, then, you're here at the ground floor. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. This is your chance and to... And so then that market study, what price ranges was that market study set for? Why don't you ask Roger that question, because he's got more detail. He's at the table number two. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I will. <laughs> yes, sir. How much influence does the Met Council have on this property? The council uh, will be supportive of the idea of, of, of this development. Um, and the Met council has a um, review of, Metro, of, the, of the comprehensive plan when it's done, but they're not going to influence the development program. So the Met council won't dictate what type of housing you put on that property? No. no. Metropolitan Council tells every one of the 189 cities in the metropolitan area uh, what their goals should be for housing choice, but that's for the city of Oakdale to look at in its total corporate limits, not necessarily the site. <coughs> yes, sir. Recent years, they've done soil samples, they've done soil testing due to the environmental concerns of people in the area. How does the planners plan to 
skirt that issue when it comes to press because I'm sure that the people that are looking at investing in there are going to say, am I sure I'm going to want to invest on property that was a dump site? The developer has done a, a detailed environmental assessment of those soils and the site is basically clear. It's clean. There's some areas where there was some, some unconsolidated <coughs> oil that was put in, but it wasn't contaminated. It will need to be done in the reading process, but it's, it's not the chemolite site. And I, I think Mr. Cushrelli would probably be willing to share that information. We certainly have that information and it will be brought forward. But that, that environmental assessment was done as part of their due diligence in deciding to purchase the property, and we have copies of those reports. There's no reason for a lot. Yes, sir. What's the de developer, um, what has he indicated to the city about his, his uh, or their plan for this uh, uh, land site? It's basically what I've said, that they're looking at a, a, a mixture of different housing types, um, recognizes that the city is, he's very supportive of this process. In fact, he's helping to sponsor the process. Mm -hmm. And he's basically saying to the community, he really wants to know what's important to the city when he brings his plans forward. But it will be a mixture of housing types and styles. There was, at some point, some talk about some specialty office buildings for medical or whatever, but I, I don't know that that's, that's still current. It's really not a good retail site. You know, it, it's, it doesn't have good access for that. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great residential site. So this isn't a public hearing. This was just an orientation. <laughs> There's all sorts of great people with better information than you out there who want to talk to you, so I encourage you to do that. Thanks for being here. Give us your comments early and often. But this is a done deal. This is something is going to happen regardless of any community input. You know, this land is, is whether owned. it's business, the land business, is privately or owned, or it's for sale. And this developer that can do whatever, but the no. city wants the, the, the city could say we're not going to change the comprehensive plan and we're going to wait for someone to come forward and develop it as an issue of business. Right. But this is a county road, and we're going to be the same as the 